Hi everyone, I'm here in the office today looking at the Jabra Panic S50. So you might already be familiar with this unit, it's been on the market for a few years now. However, it's just worth bearing in mind that in the last 12 to 18 months, there's been all sorts of firmware updates that have added new features, different tracking options, different layouts, things like that. And there are some, some newer options that are worth looking at around how you can set up the meeting room, the environment that the device is in. So I'm gonna hook the unit up. We can have a look through the Jabra Direct application and have a look at what some of those settings look like when you're configuring them. And then we'll also take a look at, we'll put the system in a call. I'll be using Microsoft Teams today. We'll put the system in a call, see how it looks and sounds on the other side of a call. And this is the, the USB peripheral all-in-one microphone camera speaker bar for the Panic S50. There is a newer equivalent of this device, which is uses the same chassis, but it's a it's a it's an appliance device that can run as a Microsoft Teams room for Android. That's not what this one is. This is just the the standard Panic S50 USB peripheral, and I'm going to go hook it up now, and we'll take a look and see what that looks like. So here I've got the Jabra Direct software set up, and you can see I've got the Panic S50 hooked up. If I Come down here to updates, you can see my device and my software are both up to date. And the software that I'm looking at here is version 6.2.2. .2. I come back here to my device and I click on my device, then this is a really this is an interesting page. What you see on this page is down here in the bottom right hand corner, you can see which devices are currently ready to go on my system. And what that means is on WebEx and Microsoft Teams, I've already set the Panicast to be my peripheral in my device settings, but I haven't set that up for Zoom yet, so Zoom shows as not ready. But that's all it means, is that I've just not set it as my, as my camera of choice at the moment. I can come here to camera controller, and that would bring up, I can get like a preview of what the camera looks like. If I come here into settings, then this, this first page is all kind of more general settings, device names, you can lock things down with a password, you can put the unit on the network, those types of things. There are some interesting settings around people count, the people count LED. So you can set the device up to work with different integrators, for example. So we have a room booking solution that we use a lot called UMA. From the, you, if you Google Ask UMA, you'll find that solution. And Jabra have an integration with UMA, for example, so that you can actually use the camera bar in the room to count how many people are in the room and then that can feed back to your dashboards to tell you if you've got a room that you've said is only for four people and you've got seven people in there, you've got too many people in there, you can have it put a warning on screen for example or you can have it flag in your dashboard that you're, that you're working with to say there's too many people in these rooms. And you, again, you can have the LED blink to indicate that there's too many people in the room, things like that. And you can enable things like power saving mode. If I come over here into the camera settings though, so this is where you find things like, if I wanted to enable the dynamic composition, so the option that splits the camera up into, up to four and puts everyone in their own little grid section, I can enable that here. Or if I scroll down a little bit, I can enable things like, if I can find it, did I go too far? Yeah, sorry, the automatic zoom mode here. So at the moment I've got this set to intelligent zoom, but the virtual director option is also there. And again, so virtual director will do the speak track sort of functionality. It'll look for which person in the room speaking, where the automatic, the intelligent zoom will more try and do like group framing and things like that, keep everyone in the shot. I can do things like change my the speed and how quickly the camera moves around. But some of the features that I wanted to continue in a little bit more detail was the intelligent meeting space setup here. So what this is designed for, if I click setup and while that's loading, I'll just explain. If you have meeting rooms that for example have windows or you've maybe got glass walls in the meeting room, you can see other people in the corridor as they're walking past and you sometimes get people stopping for a little wave and things like that. What you don't want is your camera bar detecting those people, framing them in the shot and adding them to the Teams call. It gets very distracting for the people on the far end and it can get really irritating. Another thing we've seen is like framed pictures in walls of people with human faces and the cameras will sometimes detect those pe those images, try and put them into a call, things like that. So we don't want any, we, we, we need to be able to control the size of the room, the dimensions, and what we want to be captured for the meeting. 
And that's what we can do with these same. So if I go ahead here and I set to begin with the room to be five meters in depth and two meters in, I'll go three meters in width, then I should be easily within the realms of the system. So I'll just move my laptop out of the way for the moment. And then what I'll do is if I come here to the back of the room, even though I'm at the back of the room, what you're gonna see is that green circle is gonna eventually find me. And that's saying that I am a human face in the room and I am within the dimensions that the system is allowed to use. So I am put into the call. If I come here then and I drop that depth to about two meters, then what we'll find is if I'm sat here in the room, I'm gonna get that green circle. I'm within two meters to the camera, so I'm allowed to be in the call. I'm in the shot, I'm framed. If I come to the back of the room now, and I'm stood all the way back here, then what you're gonna see is I get a red circle, and that means that even though I'm in the room, I'm not framed. So if there were other people sat around the table, the intelligent zoom would crop to get those guys in shot. It'd leave me out of it because I'm in, in the red zone, as it were. So that just kind of gives an example of the intelligent meeting space setup. And again, so that's something we're starting to see in a few different camera bars now. Um, but I think the I think the Jabra system is a pretty good example of how that can work, especially with the fact that it gives you that live preview. And then so last of all, if I scroll down, there are some options down here around things like setting presets and things like that. And there are some options for you can see field of view, I've got that 180 degree out of the box recommended setting to make sure I get as much of the room as possible. So things like contrast enhancement and video flicker, I've left them those on the out of box settings and we'll see how that performs. So what I'm gonna do now is I'll plug the system into one of our Teams rooms and I'll set up a Microsoft Teams call and we'll see how this device looks and sounds when it's brought into a call. So where I've got this system set up at the moment, I've just set up the unit directly in front of a screen here. And the idea is that you can see the full panoramic view of the 180 degree camera down here. So what, why this works so well in small rooms is because it means that for now, right now, for example, I'm very close to the screen. So if I'm here over to the side of the unit, even though I'm right next to the unit, I'm effectively still in, in the shot. And if I had things like the intelligent framing enabled, that would still be able to frame and find me. And again, even if I move right around the other side of the device, I'm still in shot, even though effectively if I were in a meeting room, I'd be very, very close to the screen. What that means is if you've got a small meeting room with a large screen on the wall and one of these units mounted underneath, then effectively, even when people are set quite, if it's a four person huddle room, even people set quite close to the screen are still able to be caught in the camera and there aren't really many other cameras on the market at the moment that are doing this sort of feature on especially not on a bar of this size to be able to have such a wide field of field of view that captures so much of the the room is very impressive and that it's really one of the unique selling points of the panic s50 over some of the other bars designed for smaller huddle rooms and what i'll do just as a quick example then is i'll pop the intelligent zoom back on and so what we should see is that's going to zoom and find me and so again if i'm stood here right off to the side that camera still able to find me i'm on a bit of an angle because i am effectively looking sideways onto the screen and then if i loop around and send at the other side of the system again then again that system is going to find me it's going to frame me and i'm going to be able to be presented into the call so we've got the panic s50 set up at the end of the desk in the room here now so for the, for the purpose of this demo, we've just used the table stand and we've just plonked the unit right on the end of the desk. And you can see this room's kind of designed for up to four or five people. So kind of the, the size and space of this room sort of up towards a, a, a medium room, not quite up to a large room, which this device should be more than capable of handling. So at the moment, we don't have any framing enabled. You're just looking at the standard room view that comes from the camera. And so I'm gonna go ahead and with the remote, I'm gonna enable framing and to begin with, this is gonna enable the intelligent zoom feature, which is the panic S equivalent of group frame. So what that's gonna do is when I push the button, zoom in on me and Johnny here in the room, and it's gonna 
do its best to crop out any extra ceiling or walls and things like that and try and give both of us a good view here in the room. So this version isn't doing any sort of speaker tracking or anything like that. What it will do is if I move around a little bit, so if I come over here slightly out of the top to the back of the room, then that should reposition to try and get us both in here. Or as another example, if I'm sat down here at the table, I should mention the audio that you're hearing here on the call as well is the uh, the microphones being picked up by the Panic S50, and then I'm streaming that out through a Microsoft Teams call that I'm then recording. So you're hearing what this would sound like if you were on the far end of the call. So if you just want to step out of the room for a moment. Yep, can do. And we'll see what that looks like when I'm in here on my own. If I give that a second, you can see that's position now for just me here in the room. And then I'll bring Johnny back in and we'll watch that reframe one more time. So when Johnny comes and sits back at the table, we'll just see how that repositions. And so you can see straight away there, it's grouped as both so that we're both here in the room. Cool, so I'm gonna flip the settings over now. So the next option we'll look at is the virtual director, which is the speaker track equivalent that this camera comes built in. System does have to reboot to enable those settings. So I'll get that set up and then we'll come back and do that test. So we're back in the room now. We've got the system set up in the virtual direct settings. So what you're gonna see is like what just happened here. When I start talking, system's gonna know that I'm the primary speaker and it's gonna track on me. And if both people are talking at the same time, it'll try and go back to that kind of group shot. And if I stop talking, Johnny starts talking, then what you'll see is it'll cut over to Johnny instead. So yeah, I will start talking now and then it'll see me as the primary speaker. And you can see there it goes into the wide shot and then it will track onto me following that um, location of me. So now you can see and hear me as the active speaker. And if Ben starts to talk, I guess, at the yes. same time with me. So then another thing that we'll just do as a quick test, if I start talking, that system jumps to track me. But then if I move around in the room a little bit, where is that going to go and how is that going to react? So if I stand here at the back of the room and I'm the person talking, it's still going to find me, it's going to track me over here. And then again, if Johnny starts talking. One, two, one, two, testing, testing, one, two. I will be the primary speaker now. And then it tracks us both in terms of a group framing option. And then back to me because Ben stopped talking. So that's the virtual director setting. So we've looked at the intelligent zoom, which is like group framing. We've looked at the virtual director, which is like speaker tracking. Now we're going to flip over and look at the dynamic composition mode, which is kind of like the people framing or symmetry from some of the other vendors that you might have heard of, where it's going to try and give each of us a box, separate us, give us as much screen as it can possibly afford to give us. And we'll have a quick look and see what that looks like by comparison. So here we are now in the dynamic composition setting. And so like you can see, the feed's been split straight down the middle so that we can both be given as much of that screen time as we as we can each get. So on the Jabra Panicast 50, the dynamic composition will split up to four quadrants. So you can have up to four participants each with their own kind of corner of the call to give that more grid-like view that people are a bit more used to seeing now on Teams calls or on Zoom calls, those types of things. Again, if I just move to the back of the room, and we'll just see how that works me around a little bit if things were to change in the room. So if I'm here at the back of the room, we can see that second frame is going to try and reposition find me. It's still trying to keep me and Johnny a similar shape and size in the room. If I leave the room, because I can leave the meeting for a little while. And I'd expect it to go up to just a single feed, and that will be myself because I'm the only one in the room now. But then if Ben walks back into the room, we'll see that the framing then both of us like that before. So there we are. That's, so that's the dynamic composition view. So we've seen the intelligent zoom, which is like the group framing, the virtual director, which is like people tracking, and then this setting is the dynamic composition. So that's the Jabra Panic S50, absolutely perfect for your small huddle rooms, small meeting spaces, in particular because of that 180 degree field of view. Um, again, it can support up to medium rooms. The 
speakers in here are more than capable for that size of room. As you go into a large room, you might be looking at a more integrated system. Um, one thing that I didn't mention that's worth bearing in mind is that the, the 180 degree field of view that you get from the three cameras at the front, uh, that's the reason that Microsoft have chosen the Panic S50 as one of the cameras that they put forward for the new Microsoft Signature Rooms, which are designed for front row. So if you look at some of the Microsoft designs for the Signature Rooms, you'll see a camera bar, not all the way against the wall, but kind of in the middle of the tables, um, designed to see all the people sat around that kind of curved desk design, and they've put the Panic S50 forward for that type of design because of that 180 degree camera that I keep mentioning. So that, that, that's it, that's the Jabra Panic S50. It's a great unit. If you are interested in having a look at one of these devices, setting it up in your environment, coming and seeing one in person, getting hands on with it, then email at info at and we'll absolutely see what we can do for you.